VAT registered and working in the construction industry? Well, watch on. As a business accountant, my team and I spend all day long helping business owners on their journey. And there are some massive changes coming from the 1st of March in the construction industry where VAT is concerned. Now, these changes have actually tried to be brought in twice. I think going back to October 2019 was the first time we were gonna see it. In fact, we recorded a YouTube video of me looking slightly more chubby than I do now, uh, talking about all these kind of things. I found it actually when we were looking at what we were gonna do now for this video. Um, and it's been delayed twice through various different things. Firstly, they didn't communicate it very well well, and people didn't know it's coming, then you know, Brexit, coronavirus, and all the rest of it. But unfortunately, there is no more announced delays as I'm recording this video, so it's coming and you need to know what to do. Now, what I wanna do in this video is I'm gonna try and give you a very short summary of the general way that it's gonna work. Um, because, uh, for example, I, we've done a, a blog that we'll link in the, in, the, in the comments below, and basically, that blog gives you a bit more of a detail about what's happening um, in, in more detailed terms. But actually, for a lot of you, you're just gonna to need to know the top level stuff. So that's the aim of this, is to talk about top level in general, where you're gonna see it the most, that kind of situation. So before I get into that, if you like these type of videos, click the subscribe button below so you get notified whenever we release another one, just like it. So what's happening? Well, they call it the domestic reverse charge. And the idea is that they're losing uh, VAT out of the chain somewhere. So if you imagine somebody who's a VAT registered subcontractor is charging their contractor up the chain, uh, they're getting paid VAT money for that and then they're just disappearing. They'll get out of business, whatever, and that's costing a lot of money. VAT fraud is, is, is big business. Um, so they're looking to kind of reduce that. And the way they're doing that is they're gonna say, right, okay, in certain circumstances, subcontractor down here, do not charge the VAT up the chain. You know, don't do it. So you, they're not gonna get the VAT money anymore that they should hand over and that should stop that problem. So. It's, that's where it's kind of coming from. Now, in simple terms, where it's going to apply is if you're CIS and VAT registered. So you're in the construction industry. Let's say you normally get CIS deductions from this person you're about to invoice. Um, you might be what they call gross status. If you are, you know what that means, um, but you, you'd still normally have CIS deductions if that wasn't the case. And your contractor here or the person you're invoicing um, normally would at least consider taking CIS off of you and they're CIS registered and VAT. So it's very normal if you're a subcontractor and you've got like another contractor up the chain that you work for, then in that situation, this new rule is gonna apply. And all that's gonna happen is you're not gonna charge any VAT on your invoice. You're gonna do what they call the reverse charge. And all that really means is in your software, uh, presuming you've got accounting software, you're gonna put in a special code that we set up in there. Um, and I'll link again the, the guidance in the, in the comments so that you can see whereabouts you can find out how to do that if you've not got a bookkeeper or accountant, but if you've got those people, they'll know what to do. Um, and it will just put zero VAT on your invoice, but it will make some changes inside the software that just means that um, all the relevant boxes and, and everything gets sorted out. And that's it, it just doesn't have any VAT on the invoice. Now, if you're a contractor receiving those invoices, again, you should expect not to have VAT charged. And this is quite important because if you do receive invoices with VAT on, there's the potential that the VAT man can come to you and say, well, you shouldn't have paid that VAT and we're not gonna allow you to reclaim it. So uh, really keep an eye on that. And you'd already see, if you've already been working, as we're recording this now in February, there's a lot of the big boys um, who have already sent letters out to their uh, subcontractors saying, look, um, we expect that you, these rules are going to apply to your invoices. So you might have already got a lead from, from that at the moment. And if you do get those invoices as a contractor, again, your bookkeeper or you, when you input them into your uh, bookkeeping system, you're going to have a special code and that's going to sort out the VAT treatment in the boxes. You're not going to be worse off in terms of actual, there's no cost involved from a, it's, it's all tax neutral. It's just on a cash, and we'll talk about it in a minute, on a cash flow basis. If you imagine as a subcontractor, you're not getting this extra VAT money at the moment to enjoy for a little period until you have to hand it over, which can cause potentially an issue. But as a contractor, you're probably in the opposite side of the spectrum and you might actually have a bit more cash because you don't have to part with that extra VAT money every time you pay an invoice. So uh, that's where it's normally going to apply. So if you just think VAT registered and CIS subcontractor, CIS and VAT registered contractor, and one's billing the other one, it's normally going to apply. Now, if you are VAT registered and work for Joe Public, then there's nothing changing. You charge your normal VAT. And in actual fact, if you do mixed works, so you do some in that subcontractor contractor scenario and somewhere you go into people's houses where well, you just apply them on the relevant invoices. So, you know, you'll, you'll uh, use this domestic reverse charge for your contractor, um, but for, you know, the person's house you've just done, uh, it's the normal VAT rules apply. So you can do either or. And if you are doing these reverse charge invoices to your contractor, that's labor and materials. So that's the general situation. That's when it's gonna happen. And um, what I've done is, 
I've linked a flow chart below in the comments that will just take you through that of when you apply it. It's very simple, it's about five boxes of does this apply, does this apply, does this apply, and in all these circumstances, when this applies, then you're not gonna charge VAT on your invoice. But as I said, in summary, that's the easiest way to think about the situation. Now, digging in a little bit then, in terms of does it cost me any money? So no, as a contractor, you're getting, you're not actually paying any VAT. So you're not physically parting with any money. And the way it works actually in behind the scenes on your VAT return is it counts as you charging yourself VAT. It's a really weird mechanism. I mean, it actually exists for some things in Europe that we used to use it, they have this reverse charge thing. But so actually what the software does in a couple of places is puts it, charges it to you and then reclaims it all on the same VAT return. So you're not actually costing you any money. And as a, obviously as a subcontractor, it's not costing you any money because you just, it, you, you're billing them, but it's from a contractor, no, it doesn't cost you any money. Um, what is the bigger issue is this cash flow thing. So we mentioned, if you're the subcontractor, you're normally used to billing people and receiving all this VAT money you might use some of that VAT money to pay for some materials and do some stuff and then um, you know build your pot of money back up so you can pay over the VAT each quarter now you're not going to be able to do that and uh, the reason is is because they're not going to pay you any VAT because your invoices aren't going to have any VAT on them now if that's the case if you imagine let's say you only work for those type of businesses you've got no VAT coming in so there's going to be nothing to hand over each quarter to the revenue um, but you are still um, paying VAT on all your materials and things like that. So you're actually going to be in a situation where the VAT people are going to owe you money. Now that's fine because you're going to get it back every quarter, but obviously you have to wait a quarter to get it back. One of the options you have, and it's worth considering and talking to your accountant about if you have an accountant or if you do it yourself, there are ways of doing this, is you can switch to monthly VAT returns. The issue with that is are you good enough with your paperwork to make that work? And also if you've got an accountant, there's likely to be more costs to do that. But if you think that's a benefit, then that is one option. And then you can get those VAT repayments back every month. Um, and you know we've got uh, developers and people like that that do that as an absolute norm. So uh, there is definitely a cash flow advantage to doing that, but do think about the practicals because you know if you're not very good with your receipts, doing it monthly is gonna be an issue. So let's get you a bit of an action list to help you on and get you prepared for this. So point, the first thing to do is look at your customers and your clients and just see are any of these going to be CIS registered and VAT registered and if they are then the charge is likely to apply. Now you're probably already aware of that for the majority of your um, contracts that you've already got but if not it's worth getting in contact with them now. As I mentioned earlier a lot of the bigger players have already probably sent letters to you telling you they consider themselves not not an end user and the reason that's important is people like the public are end users and the charge wouldn't apply. Most contractors are probably just coming out and telling you this now but if you're not sure do check with them and you really want to know, are they VAT, are they CIS registered? If you deal with the public, the best thing to do, if you've got any terms and conditions or anything like that, is put a little statement in there that says that you consider them an end user unless they tell you otherwise. And then it just puts the owners back on them to tell you, but obviously there's not a lot of chance that they're going to be anything other than an end user, but it's good just to have that covered off. Then the other practical point is to make sure your accounting software can handle it. So I mean, if you're still invoicing off of a Word document or an Excel thing that you just, uh, you know, update, then fine, you're just not going to put any VAT on there and you're going to put a statement on there somewhere that says, that, you know, that's subject to the domestic reverse charge. If you've got software, you want to make sure you've got all the right boxes turned on. And again, in that blog below, I'll link some of the more common ones for Zero and QuickBooks. I mean, at the time of recording the video, QuickBooks hasn't yet released their codes and it's very, very tight to the deadline, but Zero has, and I will update the video as that, as that goes on. So you'll be able to update your software and then um, you're ready to go really on that sense. You can now invoice correctly and get that sorted. Or if the other way around, if you're receiving invoices from this new domestic reverse charge with no VAT on, you'll have the right codes to input that into your bookkeeping system and it makes sure it appears in the right boxes on your VAT return. Now as a final point, if you're on flat rate VAT, so you use that flat rate VAT scheme where you just apply a percentage to all the money coming in, you need to speak to your accountant about it because there is an issue with that. So I don't want to go too much deep into the video with that, but definitely that's something as an action point to sort out ASAP. And that is a real top level look at it. As I say, it's slightly more complex than this, but I think for the majority of people, this is all the information that you need to know on it. And if you've got any questions, drop it in the comments below and I'll answer as many as I can. That's it for now. If you know somebody that needs to know this information, please do share it with them and I'll see you in the next one.